same thing with their insurance. It moves with the same grip. The manufacturer jumps here. You can see the four of the front arms. I think you look a little shuffle there. Extra grip movement. It's the same thing over here. Flat. Shuffle right there. There's a great little things to look for. Uh, it's called texture and timing. Where you've got like a slow movement and quick movement. So you mix things up and mix them up. Moves with the same grip. It moves with the same grip. <coughs> the whole body rocks from the head is down and the right goes up. Rocks forward and back. That's the head of the feet across. This floor is over. Pitch is balanced. Also, with his tail. They always fling their tail up for balance. It's like a counterweight or something. So it flies up there. The same thing to go to that way, go up there. And we really just touch. It's a nice little ability. This is some uh, flash animation I did uh, about a year ago. There's these two characters. This is just to show you how even without a body, you can still kind of get acting in the movement. There's these two characters that are trapped inside of a dumpster, and all you see are their eyes. One of them is a bicycle, but it's like headlights. <laughs> That's all you see when he's talking, and then the other one's just a little boy. Well, just another day of getting kicked around. Yeah. I know what you mean. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I knew there was a rat problem, but I never knew they were that big. There's, there's rats? Get me out of here. Help! But they still may be out there. Oh, are you talking about the circus of the guy? Yeah. Oh, hey, I want to say, I'm not a rat. Well, I'm no rat. I'm not a rat either. No rat. Oh, that's a funny name. Well, I'm a funny guy! What are you doing in here? I got some. Me too. Well, I know. Let's get out of here together. Okay, let's do it. On the count of 100. One, two, three. With 100? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, writer. writer. Oh, let me take a sneak peek first to see if the coast is clear. Uh, okay, and then if it is, we'll go. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 wait, wait. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Coaster's clear. Are you ready? Okay. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hi, guys! Yeah. That's it. So it's about 30 seconds long. When they gave me this, you know, I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to have to do for 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're just eyes. I mean, you have to do this and do that and move around and maybe the head tilts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the way I approached this scene was I, something I've never done before, which I was what I did was I did it straight ahead. It just started animating from the very first part of the movement, you know, to, to whatever I heard the dialogue doing. And then I just started throwing break things and make it more interesting. But then I each time I finish a section I go, okay now what do I do? You know, and, uh, I could think of something you know, the very last second of the column make it different from the previous section that just happened. And the hardest part was to try to make <coughs> Trying to make it so nothing really repeated, so there's nothing that really repeats over and over and over. Probably. Shadow. Build, 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 build. 
the CG, uh, uh, the Mighty Joe Young, you know, from that one, he had, the, had this one sequence where he's like running through a field and these jeeps are trying to corral him and capture him. And there were scenes where he's going over the hills and stuff and going in and out of the camera. And all I did was just turn off the legs and I turned off the visuals for the legs and just pick the body and get that motion. You can see a horse gallop, that kind of thing. You can go through the whole scene like that and work and the rear legs and do those. And the forearms and the overlap of the head and stuff like that. But it was just basically like a what's that called when you have that one that one node that's like controls the entire model? You know what I'm talking about? The one I guess it's yeah, the root node or the controller. I just used that thing and I moved the entire model and turned pieces on just control that one. So keep it in the the classes. That's really the feeling in terms of the full animations. Yeah, I just did the, uh, basically just the head here, the body. I tried to throw in a couple arm poses whenever it came to it, but if I couldn't imagine, I just left it off. I just did the, the basic poses throughout it. I tried to block out this dialogue. And then I went in and had the arms moving separately straight ahead. So I kind of posed, posed the head and the body up. And uh, don't, I say, don't give me no lips on it. You gotta stick by your bargain. See, at the end here, it's really choppy. That's how the whole thing is to work. Getting those poses, just like I did with that little bit of a It's just really choppy. And then I went back in for the break things. The real super rough ones, you can see in the first drawings. And the tighter ones, the ones that fit in between, so they have the tightest they can fit. <coughs>
those tests, but this has got in between still in there as well as extremes. Well, if I have a gear, me and the blue, we've got things to do. Well, if I have a gear, me and the blue, we've got things to do. Well, if I have a gear, me and the blue, we've got things to do. Questions about any of this stuff, like any procedures or anything that's been pressing that you guys have been wondering about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah if it's got drunk stuff, yeah. it's 2D, traditional paper. Even on uh, the flash, I would do that. You know, that is a separate layer. The reason why I try to keep things separate layers as much as possible is because if I get that core movement working right, get all the acting down. And I go to put the clothes in, if I mess it up, I don't want to erase the, the body that's already working, you know, so I'll put it on a separate layer. And if I mess up the clothes, I'll just erase it, readjust the clothes without damaging the rest of the, the rest of the drawings. Yeah. Figure it out like that. Yeah. You would at the deployed voices first and then they were on the back or That's a good question. The only time I've ever heard of um, and doing the animation first and then adding the voices at the end is in, is in Japan to do that. I've heard. Okay, they'll, have, they'll have the screen up there and they'll show the film and then they'll have the actors like talk about the microphone and synchronize it through the animations. Otherwise, usually it's done, you pre record everything and that way the animator listens to the, the voice actor's performance and, uh, and then tries to manage it with that. Hades, when they did Hades, James Woods did the voice, and it was so easy. They just you know, click the button and listen to him talk. I'm like, oh, that's it. You just see it, you know. He's such a great performer. He's just a piece of cake to put in there with the voices. And he's still so, you know, he's sure to do that. But yeah, that's, that's, but more often than not, the voice is important for you. Just so you can have some really good inspiration. How often do you have video to work with as far as, like, actors? Because I know, like, I'm Kansas I know in a lot of Disney films, they film pretty much the entire film yeah. with actors on the soundstage and they use that as reference. I think Peter Pan did that a lot. Um, it all depends, I guess, on the budget. Like at Sony, I remember, instead of actually having actors act out the actual scenes that were going to look like they were going to be a finished film, what they do is they just put a camera, like you guys have a camera just running out and the voice actor doing the performance of the microphone. And whatever expressions he was making, whatever little gestures he was doing, they kind of get ideas from that. So I guess, you know, if you don't have the budget to do a full blown production, but I'd actually just show the voice actor for the reference. That helps out a lot too. Any other questions about like the like you guys can ask anything about the business or Big studios versus small studios, or just how to break in and submit to the Great. Now turn that around and answer all of them. Answer all of them. Let's see. Uh, you want to get an animation run? <laughs> it, it takes a lot of patience. When I was, in, when I was taking classes back in the early 80s, um, there was a class of 16 of us. And of those 16, even before the class was done, there was like three of us left. Everybody else is like, yeah, right, <laughs> I'm not going to do this. You've got to be kidding, you know, all these drawings, it's going to be hundreds of drawings. So it was just three of us that really got into it. I don't know, and some people get into it, they try it, they just try it out, and it's not for them, which is fine. You know, I know plenty of students who like that want to be successful doing other things. I mean, there's so many different things to do in the film business that are just as much fun. But, uh, How many drawings for, let's say, you're doing a character for Feature film. How many drawings do you do for that feature film? Thousands, right? Well, I'm not really good at math, but <laughs> the formula. <laughs> every if you're gonna do one drawing for every single frame of film that goes by, you have to do 24 drawings for the one second that goes by. So a lot of Disney films are used ones a lot, which you want to do. So if you have a half an hour film, it's 24 drawings for one second. You can imagine how many drawings that you want to do. That's why they have these huge armies of people working on getting these films. It takes a long time, thousands and thousands. Yeah. 
What um, work did you do on Cats Don't Dance? I animated Danny mostly. Aww. Yeah, the main character was a lot of fun. I loved all of the movement in it. There was a lot of really um, unique movement in most of the characters in yeah, the yeah, cartoon. Uh, Ron's Fisher is really good. He worked on uh, Little Darling Temple. Oh, gosh. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, when they first brought me on the film, they showed me like a, a section they had already done. I'm like, wow, who did that? <laughs> it was just beautiful to see them. How often, especially after the thousands of, of images and drawings, do you work really hard on one scene and then it gets tossed? How do you emotionally handle deciding yourself <laughs> and going to the next? to you for the first few times you're devastated because you put so much effort and work into it. It's like, well, I'm sorry, we had to cut that up because of the time or whatever. You know, or it just wasn't fitting of the story or something. Uh, you just kind of, I guess you get used to it after a while. There's so many times that that happens. You just don't want to around. You still got a nice little devil real piece in you that I did. So I try to think positive about it. Which is true. You know? As long as you do your best, you will have a nice thing.
<laughs> I didn't really think about it when she called. I just was like, hey, I'll try it. I wanted to find out for myself firsthand what this three thing is like. So I called her up and said, hey, I'll come over. She said, oh, gosh, I didn't think I thought you were a business. And I just finished up. So I went over and started on it. And I have to tell you about the first day. <laughs> it was a pretty tough, pretty tough learning curve. When, you know, drawing traditionally all these years with different CG, right? Well, I wasn't really computer savvy at all. So the Supervisor guy brought me in and just me up and sat me down at the desk and said, okay, here's where you're going to sit. This is you know, my eyes on the computer and here's the, the uh, tutorials. And this you know, three volume segment. Boom! Oh. <laughs> this little box with cloaks in it. Okay. And so I start looking through it and I'm looking through the tutorials and so okay, I'm going to start now. I'm get familiar with it. So I'm sitting there and kind of there's a keyboard, there's a monitor. <laughs> and, uh, I called one of the guys and I said, can you help me out? He said, yeah, what do you need, man? I said, how do you turn this thing off? <laughs> there's a the, like, button on the keyboard that says power. He says, oh, man, there's a, there's a box down here. You push the button down there. Oh, OK, thanks. That's how the computer and the litter that I was. <laughs> Learning Maya was a big headache for like three months. I had to do a lot of aspirin. I got a lot of headaches, but I learned how it wasn't easy. It was like a curve like this. It was so fast. Got to be ready to work on the feature. So it was tough for me, but. Uh, what do you prefer now? I prefer hand drawn personally because you know, the way I see it for me personally, it's not the same for everybody, but I got into animation because I love to draw. So that's, that's kind of I mean, I like to the same thing. I think mean, mine is an awesome tool. Me, I just like to draw. It's just my big And actually, part of the reason why I went around and doing these seminars is because I went to a gallery show over in Olive Avenue a little while back, and I was talking to this guy and introduced to each other. He said, So, what do you do? I said, Well, I'm an animation. He said, Well, what do you do in animation? I animate. He goes, You animate? You don't do storyboards or anything? No, I actually make this 
wow, I've never met an animator before. <laughs> I guess all his friends do storyboards and stuff, all this stuff, which animation being done in the country or in general. So I said, yeah, I'd find it. Just was kind of sad to me that there aren't that many animators around. So I figured I'm going to go around and just start getting it out there, you know, and let everybody know how much fun it is and how easy it is to do it. And I saw the script, and it's, it's, it's really easy to do stuff. You just get used to it. You learn fast that way. I mean, it's a really good way to learn animation because you really have to dig in and start to get all these little nuances and stuff like actually drawing it physically and creating it. So when you go to do CG, it's a lot easier, right? But I just love to draw, so it's kind of so 2D is a dead, even though technology is perfect. No, no, actually, it's doing pretty well in Europe. I think they're doing a lot of other features, like the Secret of Hells is a good example. Yeah. 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 Oh. Triple's a bell bill. Mm -hmm. All the stuff in Japan, we got. I mean, all it takes is one film to be done here in the U.S. and boom, you know, there will be a whole bunch of 2D films as well. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think CG or 2D is going to die out because everybody likes 